Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12. And this is our automation series where we are breaking down the automation process into tiny little bits so that you understand what automation is, how it can work for you and what bits you do want and you don't want. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the MIDI SRD or the MIDI QOL sample items that come with the installation of MIDI QOL. And because we're focusing on all those settings and things that we looked at in the previous video, um, not the one before, but a few videos ago now, um, and we looked at all the different things that we can do to set up our automation, um, we're now moving into looking at individual spells and items to automate. In the last video, we looked at the DDB importer and how that can bring in stuff ready for automation for us, or at least partially. So what we get when we install MIDI QOL is we do get access to a compendium called MIDI QOL sample items. How useful, let's have a look at this. So it literally is a compendium like an SRD um, of stuff that has been made specifically to work with MIDI QOL. And there's quite a lot already in here, you can see. So we've got an actions here. Um, so we can apply this make miss so that attacks will always miss. We can apply a shove. We've got some features here, arcane wards, um, our, uh, aura of devotion. We've got dark vision here, bardic inspiration. Lots and lots of different things, laying on hands, uh, lots of things that aren't automated in the base game, but have been done as part of the MIDI QOL thing. Now, I've mentioned in the last video that as we start to layer gambits and pre-mades and the MIDI item community um, SRDs as well, compendiums and things, we may get duplications of these items. And it's like, well, hang on a minute, I've now got three versions of, for example, Rage. I've got the base game Rage, I've got the Rage from here, I've got the Rage from Chris's pre-mades, I've got the Rage from Gambits. You're going to, and they're all going to work, just in different, slightly different ways, perhaps. Um, so you may need to have a little fiddle and decide which one works the way that you prefer. We're not quite there yet. We'll have that discussion as we get there. And ultimately, Chris is, is the one that's going to really help us make those decisions um, and demonstrate stuff for us. So don't worry about the fact that we've now got multiple copies of Rage. Um, this is in an SRD. We use it or we don't. So um, what else have we got apart from all of these wonderful features? We've also got some items in here, anti-toxin. Um, braces of archery. So they're just some sample things, but this is really, really useful if you want our oh, lantern of revealing. Well, actually, I want to make something similar to that. We can, I need to uh, open this first. Um, we can have a look and go, right, how is this set up? What are the effects they're actually putting on here? Has it got any specific, you know, a DAE settings, etc.? cetera? Uh, now I've got this, I haven't imported this. I need to import it there we go, over there, before I can actually look at all of this stuff in here. But this might be a really good way, if you need to create something you don't encounter, is using, find something similar in the MIDI SRD or uh, in Gambits or wherever it might be, find something similar that does that works, and then you copy it and alter it. And we'll look at that specifically, but this is all set up, ready to go. So we can go, well, hang on a bit, what are the effects of the lantern how is this set up we can go in and we can look at those things and we can have a play um, and because it's in an SRD even if you mess it up you can just drag a clean one out from the SRD your unless you unlock it <laughs> don't do that don't unlock it and then edit the ones that are in there unless you're absolutely sure you're happy with how it works um, so yeah, we can look at all of these things. We've got some few miscellaneous things in here, like never target. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of spells in here. Um, choose blessing, um, hold person, mass cure wounds, uh, all sorts of things in here that may or may not uh, be working particularly well in the base game, um, but there is deliberately made for automation uh, and there's version numbers against all these as well so you can see oh hang on a minute shield was updated because i've got an older version uh you fi suddenly find your shield spells not working well okay drag out the new one from the srd 
for example. So loads and loads of stuff in here, well worth looking at. Um, let's just look at one example of that. Uh, as we've got Haley out, because we bought Haley. Haley has her Shield Master Shove ability. So with a bonus action, Haley is able to shove a target. I think we're still in combat. We are still in combat, and it's still Haley's go. Haley is able to use her Shield to perform a bonus action shove, and with that, she can either shove them uh, five feet away from her, or she can shove them to the ground. In other words, knock them prone. Um, and that's part of the tactics that she uses a lot. She uses her shield, she smacks them to the floor, then when they're on the floor, in goes the mace, bash, 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 at advantage, of course, because that poor critter's now on the ground, uh, the ground and pound manoeuvre. Um, <laughs> it's just how she operates. Uh, so let's uh, let's do that. So let's do the shield master shove. So um, it is her go. She is in combat. We've targeted the goblin. We click shield master shove. Oh, oh, <laughs> nothing happens. So that's base game activity. It, it I can hover over it. It tells me what it does. Uh, if you take an ac attack action on your turn, you can use a bonus action to try and shove a creature within five feet. Right, brilliant. Um, invasion doesn't really tell me. Shield Master just tells me that I can do it. Um, and it's telling me I've targeted it, but there is no automation of any description in there. So that actually is I'm having to now call for manual contested roles on that. Let's, uh, it was in actions, let's take this shove and give that to Haley. Now, uh, yeah, it's called shove rather than Shield Master shove, but it is still a shove. Um, it's exactly the same mechanic as the shield master shove and I could just rename this um, you know delete this one that's not working rename this one uh, shield master shove etc and use that so uh, let's try this again then by using this shove one so I'm just going to click it once and we've got in the chat it is saying yes we're shoving the goblin but look it's brought up the contested roll boxes automatically so on the left We've got shove acrobatic skill check for the goblin versus Haley. So this is the goblin's roll. So let's make that. Um, uh, we're going to make that roll. Yep, there we go. You've got 19. And the other box is the shove action. Uh, so the shove acrobatics skill check Haley versus the goblin. Now, interestingly, Haley actually should be using strength for that um, because that should be an athletics. I think the option is you can choose, but I think uh, athletics is what she would choose. Um, and then she makes her roll, and then we've got the results. Uh, oh, it says shove fails, 14 versus 9. So that's because uh, oh, I already had the uh, the roll up there. Let's, uh, let's delete that. Let's do that again. Make sure that's nice and clean. I'm going to do shove. Okay. Acrobatic skill, Haley Longbreeze versus the goblin. Let's make our roll. Uh, and then we've got the goblin versus Haley rolling back. There we go. And it is now saying Haley Long Breeze rolled a 17. The Goblin rolled a 7. Uh, the Shove Success 17 versus 7. What do I want to do? Do I want to move that Goblin or do I want to knock it prone? Haley wants to knock it prone. That Goblin's now prone. So you can see, even though we use DDB Importer to bring this in, Shield Master does not come with any automation. Just taking Shove, chucking it in there. It works, and it does exactly what I would like it to do. My only query is about those rules on the... Um, if, you are, da, 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 if you make an attack action on your turn, bonus action. If you aren't incapacitated, you can add your shield's AC. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to check the rules on um, Shield Master because I was fairly certain that it was an athletics check, not a dex. So I'm going to go back and just check the rules and that is actually working correctly. I suspect it's me that's wrong. Because <laughs> these guys do know what they're doing. <laughs> I just had a feeling it, was, uh, it wasn't a, a dex v dex. I thought it was a strength. I thought it was a bit like um, when you try to escape from a grapple. Uh, and the target is making that a, a strength based athletics roll. And the target is either making strength or dexterity based role depending on their preference. In other words, are they going to force their way out or wriggle their way out? So I will check that. Um, and if necessary, I could make edits to this and just come in and change how that is working. 
Um, so I would have to go into the settings, find this is after the active effects, um, but I could dig into that and find where that is. And if that is the case, we will look at that in a video of how we can change that. Um, but the point of this video is the MIDI SRD. So this MIDI QOL sample items, lots of stuff in there. Somebody in the comments has already told me how Shield Master Shove works um, and that I'm wrong because I bet you it's me that's wrong. Um, but yeah, tons of stuff already in here ready to go. We just used that because uh, I happened to have Haley out and it was near the top of the list. So uh, yeah, have a play with them and see if they work the way that you want to. The chances are 90% of them will absolutely work out of the box exactly the way you want because people are not just making these for us, they're making them for their own games. So Posney's team that are that do MIDI QOL, um, if Posney has said at some point in the past that even if everybody stopped using it, he would still build and maintain MIDI QOL because he uses it in his games. So he's the ultimate debugger as well because he's playtesting his own work, which is brilliant. Uh, includes all these items. So yeah, really nice, lovely jubbly, very happy with that. So don't forget about that one. We will encounter quite a number of other um, compendiums of items and stuff as we continue through this series. Talking of which, at the end of this video, I will catch you in the next one.